Welcome to Sidekicks with Heather Goodenkoff and Lolo, where we chat with your favorite authors and their pets. Today, we are thrilled to have New York Times and USA Today bestselling author, Mary Kubica. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for having me. I'm excited to be here. Thank you. So tell us who you brought with you. <laughs> so I have right here, you can see two of three of my cats. The third one was under the bed. She just came out and she's by my <laughs> So we'll see if she joins us at some point. But this is Zoe, Alabama, and Tabitha's the one on the floor. And all three of them are rescue kitties from um, a shelter that I've been volunteering at for about 10 years now. How did they get their names? Did they come with the names or did the yeah. family name them? You know, um, Alabama and Tabitha came with their names. So we just kept it. Zoe, we changed. Her, her name when she came to us was Taffy. And we weren't, a, we weren't a huge fan. <laughs> so she became our Zoe. But now you do, you, ha, you mentioned you worked with an animal rescue for 10 years. What kind of work do you do there? You know, um, I do, I, I love my job and I miss it because I haven't been able to go in since the quarantine and all this. So hopefully by the end of the month, um, volunteers will be able to come back. But I actually do the photographs of new cats for our website. Oh, so it's, um, it's totally rewarding and I love getting to meet all the new cats and, and work with all of them. And um, I know every now and then which some of our adoption counselors will say that, you know, um, a potential adopter was brought in by some photo that they saw online. So it just is so meaningful to me when they find the homes. And it's so important to yeah. have um, people out there helping the strays and the animals and finding them good homes. So that, that's mm -hmm. fabulous. Yeah. Do the kids get involved with that at all at the shelter? Or they, I know that there's age limits at some shelters, I know. Yeah, you know, they do. They'll, not, not all the time. But they do love to come with me and um, either help out with taking photos or just visit and play with, with the cats and kittens. So we do have dogs there at the shelter, too. We've lost one. <laughs> um, but um, I, I, know I love dogs as much as I love cats. People, I think, usually think I, I'm more of a cat person. But actually, the first day that I went to my orientation there, um, they asked people to divide up if they wanted to volunteer on the cat or the dog side and like 90% of the people went for dogs So so I decided to help out on the cat side. Oh, that's nice. That's nice. Now do the the cats have guilty pleasures? <laughs> they love to sleep <laughs> <laughs> um, I think they spend the vast majority of their time sleeping. They're all they all like to eat too um, one of ours the one that has not made an appearance we nickname her Dairy Queen because she, I mean, all you have to do is open like the refrigerator or the freezer and she'll come running for milk or ice cream, anything that, that might be dairy. So, you know, we'll, we'll give her a lick or two, which is kind of evident by the size of her belly. <laughs> Great. Now, do you, um, did you have cats or animals growing up? Yeah, I grew up with um, one of each. I had a dog named Daisy, a, a wonderful Samoyed, big white fluffy dog. And um, living in Chicago, she just loved the snow. I mean, whenever it snowed and she would go outside to play, we could not get her back in for anything. So um, she was my first, my first pet. And then a few years after we had Daisy, we got a cat as well. So, um, which was fun because the, the cat was a teeny tiny kitten and Daisy was like a big 60 pound dog. And she was terrified of this kitten when we got her. So, <laughs> yeah, so I grew up with, uh, with animals and we had a little bit of everything besides the cat and the dog, but we had hamsters, we had um, birds, little finches, um, tons of fish. Yeah. <laughs> Something. We had hermit crabs too. Oh, okay. Which was always an adventure but um, I yeah, everything, so. yeah I bet so we here now have two guinea pigs as oh, okay. well okay so, okay means in the in the house are outnumbered by animals. yes I see. and do the cats leave the guinea pigs alone do they need to be separated or no they totally leave them alone um if anything they're a little afraid of them I think just because the the guinea pigs are um they just, you know, they're not predictable, I guess, and they jump kind of quickly and, and move quickly. So the cats usually just stay away. Do you have um, a favorite animal from literature or pop culture that you just kind of is your go-to? I think um, one that I love, and I, I'll admit, like I sometimes do stay away from 
the books or uh, movies with dogs or any kind of animal in them because I'm afraid for what's going to happen at the end. <laughs> I don't know if my heart can take it. <laughs> but I did read um, The Art of Racing in the Rain and I saw the movie too. And I think Enzo from, from that book is a favorite of mine. That's a great one. And just, yeah, just a, a tearjerker for sure. Anytime oh, sure. that there are animals. In the world. It was a definite ugly cry moment. <laughs> so you are the, the New York Times, USA Today bestselling author of six novels, including um, The Good Girl and your most recent hit, The Other Misses. How do your animals um, inspire, do they inspire your writing life or how do they contribute to, to it? Yeah, you know, I would say that um, they just, they keep me still, you know, there are times when they're just, they're quiet and they're peaceful and it's so easy to just, you know, take my laptop wherever they are, if you're on the couch or on a bed and just sit by them and write. And I feel like they calm me down. I'm one of those people that's like, go, go, go. And, you know, so to have an excuse or someone climb up on my lap and really just kind of keep me in place for a while and focus on my writing, it's, it's really helpful. They're really, real animals are really good for that. Um, yeah. at least the still ones are. Uh, Lola's being pretty quiet right now, so yeah, she's still her name. <laughs> I love watching the pictures of her and, and the videos online. She's just adorable. Yeah, she, she's a sweetie for sure. So what do you have next for readers? Yeah, so The Other Misses will be out in paperback in August. I think it's August 7th. And then I just finished up my next book, which is called Local Woman Missing. And um, it's about the disappearance of a couple women and a little girl in um, a suburban neighborhood. And it's just kind of the investigation that, that goes with that. Um, it doesn't have a release date yet, but we're looking at probably late spring of 2021. Oh, great. Yeah, so not too far away. Yeah, I know it'll be here before we know it. Yeah, we'll have to wait a little bit longer, but looking forward to the paperback release and to your new one coming up so so if your kitties were to describe you in either a phrase of three words or three separate words how might they describe you oh that's such a good question i um <laughs> um i think it's like the food provider <laughs> <laughs> you know um they always they love everybody in the family but they're always following me around and i don't for a minute think that it's that they love me the most i think it's that they know that i'm the one that feeds them <laughs> i take it as they love you the most that that feels a little bit better so <laughs> that's great well thank you mary so much for being here with us we'll be on the lookout for the paperback release of the other misses and local girl missing coming hopefully next spring sometime a set date to come soon but thank you for being here and sharing your sidekicks with us. Absolutely, thank you for having me.